my dad woke me up at 9 a.m. the next morning. This happened that night at 12, 12.05. But I did not know about it until the next morning. My dad woke me and my little brother up because we shared a room together. But yeah, all I remember is just waking up and him coming in. He has tears in his eyes. And my mom wasn't home. My Aunt Teresa was there and she had tears in her eyes. And he just, he comes in and uh, he comes in the room. He's like, hey guys, you got to get up. It's time to get up. And I'm there mad at him, right? Because Saturday I had a day off. I want to sleep in, right? So he's like, I got to tell you guys something. And he had tears in his eyes. And then I got scared. And I looked at him. I'm like, what's wrong? What happened? And he's like, first thing you got to know is that your brother, he's okay. Your brother's fine. I was like, okay, what happened? He's like, there, there was an accident. I was like, what, what accident? What, what happened? He's like, um, last night coming home, the van, it, they hit a transport. I was like, okay, like, is everyone all right? Like, what's, what's going on? Is everyone okay or whatever, right? And he's just like, um, it's like, your brother's okay. He's fine. He's in the hospital. He's in ICU right now. They say he's going to be okay. And I was like, okay, what about, what about Nathan? What about Cody? Like, he's like, he's like, then he's like, Brad, uh, Brad Arsenal. He's okay. I was like, okay, Brad Arsenal. He's okay. The coach, Coach Lord, he's okay. I was like, all right. Then he's like, um, Katie, his coach's daughter, who traveled on the trip, she was okay. And I didn't, I was, I'm trying to like, okay, what about everyone else? And he's like, but seven of those guys, eight, including the coach's wife, just did not, didn't make it. And then that's when, you know, it hits you, you know, and you just break down. And, you know, my dad held me for a while, and as I cried, and then my little brother, I looked at my little brother's face, and I, came and described the look in his face. He's just astonished of what happened. And it was the first thing I did was we got dressed. And me and my little brother got dressed. My dad, we got in the van with my dad. And we went to the hospital to visit my brother. And anyway, so we get to the hospital, we're in ICU. And you just look at everyone, all the nurses, the cops that were there, the people, they all knew what happened, right? They know why I'm there. And it was a dark, dark morning. And anyway, so we go in, I go into the uh, room to see my brother, right? ICU. They gave him, they had to go into surgery or whatever, and they gave him a little something to calm him down so we can go in and visit him, right? So I go in, I see my brother, me and my little brother, we go in. My mom's there sitting by the bed. She's sleeping, but she looked like she's been crying a lot. And my brother's just wide awake, and he's still in shock, right? And he had his regular clothes on. They're all ripped. Uh, he had his wrist in a sling. Um, he had blood all over his chest and on his arm. And I asked him like, where he was bleeding, and he looked at me, and he's like, it's not my blood. And I was trying to put everything together, and he's just like, did you hear what happened to the other guys? And then my little brother's like, let's just not talk about that right now. Let's just enjoy our time together. Then uh, my dad comes in, and he tells us it's time to leave. Time We're going to go over to the BHS, to the high school, because they're having a thing there for all the people, parents and stuff. So my brother, little brother stayed. I decided to... Uh, get up and go over to the uh, to the school to visit them, right? My friends and whatnot. So uh, I go over to the school and I walk in the doors and there was literally about 200, 300 people there just crying and no one knew what to do. Trying to figure everything out, what happened, right? And, and I just stopped talking. I went into, my dad calls like a little shell to be safe from everything. And so I just I was just sitting there and friends were talking to me, everyone was hugging me, just hugs and shaking hands and sorries and condolences. Just all over too like just too many people saying that, right? And so then I uh I remember I go into the counselor's office, I meet with the uh, school counselor, and he brings me in, he just sits me down, he just looks at me and I have nothing to say and he had nothing to say, and then he just gets up and he gave me a hug and then I had another breakdown, I just let everything out. It was just, it was a long, very, very long day. Where we, where I grew up is like in the center of uh, like two plate, like Bathurst and Dahousie. And you can choose where you want to go to high school, Dahousie High School or Bathurst High School. And when I was, me and my brother in grade eight, we graduated where everyone wanted to go to high school, grade nine. We both decided we wanted to go to Bathurst. So we go to Bathurst, I go there for three years. And I played basketball grade nine. We both did grade nine, grade 10, grade 11. So I did uh, last year, grade 11 there. After that year, I decided to transfer to Dahousie High School. Better basketball program, better basketball team. So that's what I did. And my brother decided to stay because he was more involved in, like, 
the school, like with like uh, student council and uh, just like programs in the school and stuff like that, right? So he decided to stay. He didn't like basketball as much as I did. And he decided to play his last year still, his grade 12 year, and I played a different high school. And we actually played against each other a couple of times, and it was pretty rough. Like we, got in, we got into a couple of like little fights, I guess you could say, right? And yeah, so like I knew all those guys. We met them in high school. We had a great time. They were our crew. You know, that's what we hung out with every day, grade 9, grade 10, grade 11. Like, we did, we did so much good times together. One time I went to McDonald's, we ordered 100 burgers just to see what they'd say, right? And we ended up ordering 100 burgers, actually. It was a pretty cool time with the guys. And it was just, you know, it was a, it was a good experience with those guys. I had a lot of memories with them. And even when I transferred for the first little bit, like, they were mad at me for a little while. You know, like, kind of bailed on them and whatnot. But they got over it, and we just... Uh, we never had a weekend off where we meet each other at the tournament. We hung out and some good times with them once again. And even over the Christmas break and stuff, we had some parties and whatnot. Uh, it was uh, the feelings. It's just disbelief is one of them. You don't want to believe it. You just want to think this didn't happen. This isn't real. This is a dream. You want to wake up from it. Uh, then you have your other feeling. Then like the fact that my brother survived, but my best friends are dead, and their brothers and sisters are mourning over their dead brother, right? And I'm there, I'm, be, I'm happy. I'm happy my brother's alive. But then again, like, I'm just torn apart because some of my best friends are dead. So you got those mixed feelings in there, you don't know what to do with yourself, and it's just, it's hard to describe, but you feel useless, I guess is what it is, because you just, you want to do something. You wish it wasn't real, you wish you could save them, there's, looking for things you could do to make sure it didn't happen. You want to go back to the last time he's, he's hung out. He's just, he's it's terrible. Just, uh, it's bad, bad feelings, the only way I could describe it. Um, I did get a little closure, though, when uh, I started th that year, when the snow went away, when we started doing the burials. I went to seven different burials in one week. And I got a little closure after the last one. When that guy's like, okay, everyone's in the ground, you know, they're all, they're dead. You got to move on. You can't be feeling like this forever. But still, like school, I stopped going to class. I stopped going to school. I just didn't care much for basketball. I just didn't really want to do anything. Um, but then now, like, I find myself, like, growing up. My brother helped me a lot. He, he, he was in the accident. And just his strength, like, emotionally and physically, it was just unreal. And like he was there in the accident, he's seen everyone, he's seen what happened. He like, but he's always helping me out, making sure I'm standing straight and my head's on right, and helping me talk talk me through my feelings and whatnot. So anyways, now I find myself just, I'm better. Like I'm 100%. I've dealt with it. I we all have our day. We still feel. We still cry sometimes. Like the anniversary, I still have my night. I stayed home thought about them, talked to old friends, phone calls from everyone, see how they were doing because it's, you know, but I remember them and I don't remember how they died, I remember how they lived and the great things we had, the great times we had and everything I do now, basketball, every time I play video games, party and stuff, you know, they're in my mind and I like to have a good time and have fun and be happy for them now, you know, can't always be sad and just hating life. I don't have any blame. I just hate the fact that it happened. I wanted to go back in time and stop them from coming home. Uh, the weather, I said so they shouldn't have been traveling. Coach shouldn't have been driving. But like I know now, like, it's just a freak accident. It, it happened. It shouldn't have happened, but it happened. No preventing it. It's just the way I see it now, If you're, when your time's up, your time's up. Yeah, and then at the school they have a uh, out in their courtyard they have a nice little setup. It's uh, uh it's hard to explain. But it has a basketball hoop, their names on it, and then each of, like little plaques of their names and things they've done at the school and stuff like that. So it's pretty neat. It's pretty cool. It's really nice. I got this a year after the accident. 
because I went back to high school for another year to play play basketball. I wanted to win a championship for the guys. And uh, I thought, you know, I wanted to have something, you know, to remember them by. And my right arm is my shooting arm. So I got this tattoo. Two here, these are their numbers. And rest in peace. They were called the boys in red after the accident. And bros for life. It was just all of them, all my friends, like that knew the guys. We all got bros for life in our tattoos. And then the date of when it happened. Really, I just... I know they're with me always. They're always looking down on me. All right, they love me. I love them. They love basketball, and they forgave me for like for going to a different school. And they knew it was because I loved basketball. And it's what I wanted to do. So it was good. I love having this. I'm never. I always show it off. Never hide it. it feels good to have. Well, me and my brother Tim, we've always been best friends. Like we're twins, right? Grew up together, and we've had our fights. But we're, we've always been best friends, no matter what. He's always been there for me. I'm always there for him, no matter what. And now, like, we just, we always take the time to talk to each other. He always calls me when he's traveling somewhere. He always lets me know when he makes it there safe. It's just my whole family in general. Um, before, like, I had this routine before I go to bed. I just be like, night, mom, love you. Night, dad, love you, right? My mom would always say, love you back. My dad would just say, night. And it's just like... We're men, right? You don't say I love you, man, kind of thing to each other, right? And like, my, I know my dad loves me because he's my hero. He's done so much for me. And like, now, as every time I say night, dad, I love you, he always says night, love you too, back, right? And like, even with my brothers, even at the time after the accident, like, we've never really hugged. Like, we'll hug now, and I'll see my brother, I would give him a hug. My little brother, I'll give him a hug. And it's just, it brought us really, really closer as a family. And just now, you just, I find my brothers like my best friends and my, my dad a really good friend, my mom. My mom's just amazing. And yeah, it just it brought us closer. And now like I talk to Tim about anything, he tells me anything and we just it's no secrets between us anymore, I guess, like there used to be. Because so I was more of a uh I don't know, he was always a goody two shoes and I was the the badass, I guess you could say. But now we uh pretty tight. Talk every day, just you know. Make sure things are good with each other. Yeah.